And I'm going to have her tell you a few words about what she's all about. Okay. Thank you, association members, for allowing me to take just a couple minutes of your time. I wanted to talk to you about... Can everybody hear me in the back? Excellent. I wanted to take just a couple of minutes to talk to you about the volunteer opportunities and the support network out there in the community uh, working with the Los Angeles Police Department. Uh, so let me first tell you, if I may, about the Community Police Advisory Board. Uh, which goes by the African CPAP. This is a group of folks, uh, business owners here from Sherman Oaks, uh, Van Nuys, and, and a tiny portion of uh, Studio City. People who do business or live in the division served by the Van Nuys area uh, station. Uh, everybody knows where your station is, right? In Van Nuys, on Silmar, I hope? Good. Okay, so the Community Police Advisory Board is comprised of folks who like to work in a grassroots uh, fashion, such as uh, our folks who are working to rejuvenate Van Nuys Boulevard, and then we have some folks who are supporting the uh, LAPD youth programs. Perhaps you're familiar with the Jeopardy program. They do uh, an event annually that many of you have attended called the Tip Cop uh, event over at uh, Baroni's. So the CPAP folks are all people who work with the senior lead officers and other members of LAPD to improve quality of life issues that are pertinent to public safety. And I'm the civilian co-chair of that organization. I work very closely with our captain, uh, who you will meet soon if you haven't already. He's uh, very, very community oriented um, and, and working very hard to, to get out and meet folks like you. His name is Captain Paul Snell. The other organization uh, that I'm involved with is called the Mid Valley Community Police Council. If, if you'll notice on, uh, on your table there, you have an event flyer. The Mid Valley Community Police Council is, uh, for lack of a better term, it's the booster club for LAPD. And again, I want to emphasize all of this work and our fundraising is for the station in Van Nuys. So the beneficiary would be the officers uh, and other employees at LAPD's Van Nuys station, the station that serves you all at your homes and businesses. Uh, we raise funds twice per year at two major events. The one coming up is soon, and it's July 9th, and it's called Cops and Cowboys. It's a really fun event. Uh, and uh, I, I'd say the best way to describe it, if you've not been, is it's really a, a party celebrating, with the theme of Country Western, it's a party celebrating the collaboration between the Los Angeles Police Department and members of the community. So the crowd <coughs> pardon me, is comprised of stakeholders, business owners, uh, as well as LAPD officers and command staff. And we get together at a ranch. It's out in Canyon Country. Please don't let that scare you. It's 20 minutes from Sherman Oaks. I've done it. It's 20 minutes. It's a Saturday, July 9th at 5 o'clock. And the motif is a ranch. We're actually having it at the VFW uh, uh, post out there. We have a Country Western band. We have uh, a country western actor who's a specialist in uh, gun slinging and entertaining for country western uh, events. And then we have some very special guests uh, this year. In fact, Chief Beck will be attending this year. And if you haven't already had the privilege of meeting him, perhaps you've seen him speak at, uh, at events uh, around town, and he is everywhere, uh, you, you will know that he's a very communi community minded uh, person himself. In fact, he yeah. tells uh, folks that he grew up within the department and one of the most satisfying roles that he had uh, was as a senior lead officer. And I presume everyone in this room knows what a senior lead officer is. We have one in the room. Vince, tomorrow, say hello to the crowd. So, happy to um, offer you tickets or perhaps a sponsorship opportunity. My name and contact information is on that flyer and ask uh, you to support it in any way that you can. Thank you very much. Um, I, I hail from Australia. I moved here about nine months ago. Um, and 
don't know if you guys know, but Western Group happens to be an Australian company, so they're bringing a couple, they're bringing a couple of Aussies um, up to the States. And um, we have one question for you. Go for it. Westfield is selling a number of their uh, malls. They are. Uh, is Sherman Oaks one of them? Uh, no, it's not. Good. Sh Sherman Oaks uh, as a mall. Um, be closer. Sherman Oaks as a mall, um, it does very well. Um, if you look at it just like as a sales per square foot sort of thing, it's a really successful mall. And um, I know that everyone sort of goes on about how it's a little bit run down, and you know we need to. Do a, you know, we had to fix it up a little bit. Um, I'm pleased to say that we have got, um, we just got approved um, some food court renovations, which are gonna start in uh, September of this year. So that's very exciting. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a really successful mall in our portfolio. They're gonna be expanding it with their new stores. Is that on hold or what's status? Um, they'll be expanding the food court in terms of the rest of the, the area. Uh, Probably not right now, but um, down the track, I think Chuck, Chuck, Chuck was saying that um, uh, you know why don't we sort of extend it towards women? Um, so I don't know; it's a possibility, maybe sometime in the near future. Yeah. Um, yeah. So this is my first my first uh, meeting, um, and um, yeah, I mean, if you guys have any questions or complaints or um, anything, you know. I'm just sitting down over there, so don't be shy. Come and, uh, yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure. That's okay, I'm ready, I'm ready. Okay, do you have any questions? No, 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 We don't have anyone that complains here on our West Coast. Okay, don't worry about it. All right, thank you. All right. By the way, you'll notice on the tables, $25 coupons from Sports Authority. Do you all know where the new Sports Authority is? No. It's on Riverside Drive, next door to the Fashion Square at School Strip Center, to the uh, east of it, by the Bank of America. So that's where it is. It's a two-story Sports Authority facility is very nice and has a coupon to get you in there. Okay. Um, okay, I need Hey Paul. I need you both to come up. Okay, here we are. By the way, while we're waiting, if you have any ask your question, uh, the forms filled out. Matt is walking around and he'll pick them up. Okay. Which one of you is Jim Cynical? <laughs> the big ones. You <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Brandon. Thank you, Brandon. We'll get in the bag. We'll get in the studio. Jules, do you have more? Jules, everyone's waiting on you. They don't know. What's next? What surprise do you have for us? Uh, no surprise. That's it, Richard. Thank you. Everyone who's eating, we have a lot of things we want to do. Why don't we stay, start with the uh, LAPD, uh, see the lead officer. Uh, as you know, the various sections of Sherman Oaks, the, the senior lead is assigned to a certain geographic area and he becomes the essentially the local police officer for that geographic area, and uh, we'd like to get an update on what's happening in the Sherman Oaks area. Hi everybody, I'm Vince tomorrow. I'm filling in tonight for Justin Berman and George Aguilar. Unfortunately, they couldn't make it. Uh, quick update that I'd like to give you. Sherman Oaks still is showing great numbers when it comes to violent crime. It's very low, and as of right now, few and far between. 
However, the summer months are coming and we're having a lot of problems with property firms. And they're starting to see a little bit of a rise. We're still down year to date and we're still doing great on numbers. However, we do need to start working a little bit more with our neighbors and our family and help reminding them on how to prevent these property crimes from happening. We're seeing a bad trend again with most of the reports that are coming across my desk right now are showing suspect broke in a vehicle and took laptop, took GPS, took iPod, took briefcase. We're having a lot of those issues where people are not putting items away that are important to them and their driveways are getting broken into. It's happening in carports and especially at the mall right now, we're having a big rash because people get in a hurry, they put their items in the back seat of their car instead of the trunk, they run in and grab something to eat, 15 minutes later they come out and everything they just bought is gone. So I have some flyers over on the table over there for our Lock and Hide Keep It campaign. I also put another little vehicle safety flyer over there that I think is going to help everybody out quite a bit, give you some good ideas. And in the meantime, hopefully everybody's paying attention. Take the extra minute to make sure your car is clear. Take the extra second to get everything out at night and make sure the car is locked. That's the best advice I can give you. And Remember, these crimes that are happening that are the biggest concern are crimes of opportunity. If you hide your items, it's not worth the risk because these suspects, criminals, in the back, please, they can't guarantee a reward. If they can guarantee a reward and it's on the seat, they will take the risk of breaking into your car and trying to get away with it. So let's look out for yourself, your family, and your neighbors. Any other questions for me? Thank you very much. Have a good night. Thank you, thank you. Uh, I'd like to have the uh, deputies of uh, elected officials come up and introduce themselves. Uh, while they're doing that, I want to remind everyone there is no meeting or newsletter in July, so the next meeting will be in August. Are you a deputy of a like the questions and give them that to Matt, he'll pick it up. Okay, who wants to be first? All these shy people. Good evening, my name is Jason Levine. I'm a field representative with Senator Fran Pavley, uh, the 23rd State Senate District, uh, which runs from Ventura to Fairfax, from Studio City to Westlake. And um, today is the constitutional deadline for the legislature to pass the budget, as I'm sure you're all aware. And about an hour and a half ago, uh, it was passed. And it will go to the governor's desk. Any tax increases? Uh, not. No. No, no tax increase. Also, um, one more question um, on redistricting. Is the Senator's district changing as it affects Sherman Oaks under the draft plan? Under the draft plan, there are changes on the Senate level, the Assembly level, and the Congressional level. Uh, it is a draft, and it is not... So how does it affect Sherman Oaks in uh, Fran Pavley district? You know, Fran Pavley, uh, Senator Pavley would still have uh, Sherman Oaks. And I will say, additionally, another plug for my boss: we sent 18 of 23 bills that we introduced in the Senate to the Assembly, and we're very proud of those bills. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Stephanie Gillette from Assemblymember Mike Fear's office. I'm not going to speak on the budget because we have uh, someone here from Assemblymember Bloomingfield's office who will speak a little bit more, elaborate on that. But I will update you about 8052, which is a healthcare re-regulation bill. It passed in the Assembly and hopefully it's, a, it's, in, it's in the Senate now, so we'll see what happens. And do you know the redistricting uh, district as it affects uh, Michael Fear and Sherman Oaks? Do you know? No, no. It, that's changing drastically. It is changing? Yeah. Okay, and we're going to talk for a couple minutes about your district. Wes? Good evening, everyone. Wes Hernandez, Councilmember Paul Peretz, a field deputy for Sherman Oaks. Just three quick things. As you may all know, 30 days until the planned 405 closure, a 10 mile closure for 53 hours, July 15th through July 18th. Uh, the northbound 405 will be closed for 10 miles between the I-10 and the US-101. The southbound 405 will be closed for 4 miles between the US-1 and Getty Center Drive. Uh, last week, Councilmember Perez presented... Hey, don't, don't talk about that. Oh, we're we're going to talk about it. Oh, yeah, sure. All right, next, DWP community meetings. Uh, 
DWP is hosting various community meetings throughout the city uh, in order to discuss rates as well as uh, the future for DWP this upcoming fiscal year. I left some flyers over there with some uh, locations for these upcoming meetings. Uh, lastly, the uh, Mosaic Mixed Use Project, aka the Baroni site. Uh, our office met with SOHA representatives last week in order to discuss uh, funds coming from the Department of Transportation paid for the develop paid by the developer for crosswalk improvements on Moore Park as well as a traffic signal on Ventura. Uh, we had just learned from DOT that the signal improvement on Hazeltine and Ventura will occur sometime this upcoming fiscal year, so they will be getting a left turn signal uh, in that left turn lane. And uh, the developer also expressed interest to pay for the engineering study to uh, see if a crosswalk was feasible at that location. Uh, he does know that DOT no longer does traffic engineering studies, so he did step up and did express interest for this engineering study to be done. And that's about it. Thank you. And the reason we have people like Wes come out is so you can identify, if you get a problem in the Caracas district, you're the man, right? Your job is to solve their problems. Exactly. Okay, so after the meeting, if you're, if you're in Crisis District and there's a problem, Wes is the person to speak to. Pearl? Pearl, Congressman Berman's office. Thank you. Um, Veterans Homeowners uh, Home Buyers Workshop this Saturday, the 25th in San Fernando. This is excellent for veterans. Uh, able to buy a house, no money down. Uh, Congressman will be there, and it's from 10 to 1 p.m. And I also brought some more cards. We like, we still like, we're still in Sherman Oaks. We we, uh, we would like your opinion. So I left in the back, but especially email. So if you're interested in any specific issues, we can get back to you. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. And Bob Anderson is going to be talking about the congressional redistricting in a, in a second. Good evening, everyone. I'm Eric Rodriguez. I'm here on behalf of State Assembly Member Bob Winfield. Uh, he wished he could have been here today, but today, like the announcement uh, by Jason, that the budget was passed, and uh, as the chairman, he had to be there to file in. But uh, he sent me instead, so hopefully that, that's okay. Um, as you may know, the redistricting, redistricting Commission has put out the new maps, and the Assembly Member Bloomfield is very happy to alert that everyone, that, including, that will include Sherman Oaks, and he wants to know he's very happy that the majority of Sherman Oaks will now lie in his district and everything remains the same. Uh, but he's been privileged to uh, cover a small portion, but he's even very happy now that the majority of Sherman Oaks will be in his district. So we thank him for that. And he'd also like to send a personal thank you to the Sherman Oaks uh, Homeowners Association for helping uh, pass the mobile billboard bill that we did last year. So he wanted to personally thank you for that and, and thank you for your support. And if you need anything from our office, I'm here, Eric Rodriguez, and you can contact Assemblymember Bloomingfield. I have cards with me, and enjoy the rest of the evening. Thank you. Thank you. Pat? Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Pat Hello, Pat Davenport for Councilman Paul for Corey, and I've got four real quick things. One, I want to tag on just a little bit to the ordinance that we got past the state that allowed the city to pass an ordinance on mobile billboards. And just to let you know that Dr. Paul met today with the city attorney and the Department of Transportation to look at those last few, probably 85% of those billboards we all hated are gone. But the ordinance was very carefully crafted in Sacramento uh, that to only apply to unhitched trailers. Right. So the one out here on the street that's hooked to the van is legal, but the numbers are way down. So. We are looking at if there's a way to expand it to the others, but we're pretty happy to have gotten rid of everything we have. Uh, the other item, the two or three items I wanted to quickly mention was the senior center, we are making progress. It's like pulling teeth. Uh, but Reckon Parks now has a key, can get into the building, and can actually move themselves in. So over the next two weeks, all the recreation uh, activities for seniors that the park does will be in the new center, and then shortly thereafter, the uh, uh, East Valley program will come in and begin serving meals and other things there. So, progress is happening. Uh, and then the two other things, and I put them on the table over here, Paul's 
e-newsletter, please go to the website, sign up for it. Um, it comes out usually about once a week and really has a lot of good information. Thank you. And I, one last, I'm going to just, <laughs> on July 2nd, Van I Sherman Oaks Park is your personal invite. Paul is going to celebrate his inauguration for his first full term in the park on July 2nd with hot dogs, hamburgers, ice cream, and fireworks. Hi. <laughs> General fun. General fun. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, <laughs> Member Bloomingfield is introducing a bill that's in the Senate but now that will go, will do away with those uh, parked cars or chairs in the back. So look out for that. And again, we need your support, and uh, I'm, I'm glad we have your support. So look out for that. Assembly Bill 1298. Thank you. I also wanted to mention very quickly that I brought fresh copies of our June newsletter and right after the budget was passed today, Senator Pavley made a statement on the budget. I also have that press release on that table. Thank you. Thank you very much. No more. Oh, they can do pictures, sure. Bob Anderson. Uh, while Bob is coming up, let me uh, explain. Bob was downtown working for you this morning at City Hall, and that's always about a five hour process. Shh, in the back. So, uh, downtown City Hall for you this morning, and where are you going? Tomorrow night, you're going to Culver City. Okay. Uh, on the redistricting uh, issue, which is cutting up Sherman Oaks for some of these, uh, for, especially on the issue of uh, U.S. Congress, for those who don't get our email blast, the proposal is to divide Sherman Oaks between uh, congressional districts, and uh, the boundary line would be Ventura Boulevard. Apparently, the redistricting commission thinks that Sherman Oaks either starts or ends on Ventura Boulevard. So, um, and uh, we would be in the same district as the west side. It's not just the west side, it's the district we would be in would be from downtown LA to the ocean. And then we would go over the hill, uh, just to Ventura Boulevard. So we would be like probably 1% uh, and uh, of the district. So it doesn't make sense. So Bob is working on that. So give us an update on those two issues. On redistricting, uh, we'll talk about that one first. We submitted a letter to the, it's the Citizens Redistricting Commission, and they meet and they put these first drafts together. If any of you have tried to look at them, it's a little hard to download the maps, they're hard to read. Basically, Sherman Oaks was kept whole for the California Assembly and whole for the California Senate. What they did, as Richard said, cut us in half for the U.S. Congress. So we submitted a letter and said, basically, this is silly. You shouldn't do that. We're a community of interest. And tomorrow night, uh, several people, by the way, responded to our email blast that Richard sent out last night and have already sent emails to the redistricting commission. Thank you very much. If you want to send one, look at the blast, or I can give you the address and tell them it's wrong to split us. I'm going down there tomorrow night for a short meeting from 5 till 11 to speak and uh, hopefully get my number so I can hand them these letters and tell them it's wrong to do this. But if you want any information about it, I'll be glad to email it to you or whatever. But it's important for Sherman Oaks to not be split up. Now, the 405, there was a meeting, the city council grilled the LAPD, Caltrans Metro, the LA Fire Department, LAX, and the contractor this morning on the 405 closure. And here's the basic answer that everybody gave. Stay home that weekend, don't go anywhere, or go away and don't come back. <laughs> Just get out of town or lock yourself in your house. Caltrans' answer is, yes, you'll be able to get places. It will just take you 10 times as long. Sepulveda will be a parking lot. But the good news is uh, Councilman Koretz and Councilman Rosendahl introduced a motion to sort of put some pressure on everybody. But in the motion, it gives the city the right to close off neighborhoods. And we're working with Bel Air to try to close off certain streets to locals only. Don't know how that will come out. Right now they're saying they won't do it, but we've got a little foot in the door. Because we're worried about 
take a street that goes up to Mulholland. If it's chopper block cars in both directions and someone has a heart attack at the top, the ambulance won't get there and that person could be in trouble. And uh, so we're working to try to prevent that. It's a couple of days, you know, barbecue, have some fun with your kids, whatever. Make it a family event, but don't go out. You just don't want to do that. And just one final point. The, as everyone hopefully knows by now, uh, the freeway will be closed for two and a half days. We know that. That's been everywhere. But let's uh, publicize the fact that Sepulveda will be jammed because that will be done in the freeway. So everyone's going to have to avoid Sepulveda. So where are they going to go? They're going to go into the hillsides looking for ways to get from the north to south to south to, to north. So the concern is that the neighborhood is going to be jammed by people either using shortcuts or trying to find shortcuts, which will just create a major problem throughout the hillsides of Sherman Oaks in particular. One last point. They keep saying it's, the freeway will close at midnight. That's true. But it starts to close at 7 o'clock. Highway Patrol on Friday night at 7 is going to start to control closure of exits. So if you're anywhere around at 7 or 8 at 9 on that Friday night, Get away. They're going to put six feet of sand on the 405 under the bridge so in case a piece falls, it doesn't break the freeway. Then they have to get the sand off so it opens at 6 Monday morning. And as I just pointed out, 53 hours of closure is the best case scenario. Correct. So, uh, with that, I'd like to introduce the board director, members that are here, Chuck Betts, on the board, Matt Epstein, uh, Jules Fear. Uh, Bobby Anderson, uh, Ellen, uh, John Eisen, Elke, and what else? Marshall Long. Uh, Speaker Marshall Long, why don't you come out and watch this map? Epstein, Chairman of the South Valley Planning Commission, please excuse himself so that uh, Marshall can talk about planning matters for the Sherman Oaks area. Actually, Matt Lee's because he can't stand to hear me talk. <laughs> um, okay, uh, briefly, we had a very productive meeting with the Veronese developer. Uh, their project is called Mosaic. Um, and uh, <clears throat> uh, it was with uh, Greg and his daughter Beth uh, Brody. Um, John Eisen, Ellen Mukovich, and I attended from. So hot, and we'd like to thank the CD5 Council Office for arranging the meeting and, and setting it up at their offices. The purpose was to introduce John and Ellen to the latest project since they had the most involvement with the previous project and, and uh, uh, didn't make the previous meeting. So, so those who don't know Veronese, where, where is it located? Hastings and Ventura, just west of uh, Rouse. <clears throat> Um, the second purpose was to review the sign agreement between SOHA and the previous owner to establish a traffic mitigation fund for post-construction improvements should they be needed. Uh, this was signed uh, by the uh, owner at the time and adhered to the uh, property. Um, what we, our, our concerns were uh, several, and, and John went over there at the meeting. First, um, we'd like a, a, a no left turn sign from the garage exit, which is a, a onto Moore Park. It's northbound, um, so that the, the traffic wouldn't cut across the the uh, near lane. Uh, second, uh, we want a no parking on the south side of Moore Park near the uh, garage entrance. Um, and third. We wanted a signalized crosswalk across Moore Park. Um, the developer <coughs> in, uh, had agreed in principle to all three of those and agreed to participate um, financially and, and to work on traffic mitigation um, using his own uh, traffic experts. Um, the, he was not as clear on the old agreement um, uh, but uh, uh, what we, he, we agreed to is John uh, would draw up a new agreement between Soha and the developer so there was uh, clarity in that regard. 
Uh, the construction, as everybody probably knows, has begun. Uh, Ralphs will wait until the heavy construction is finished to begin their own construction. That will be the middle of September. Um, interestingly, we learned that both projects will need to access a high voltage connection at Van Nuys and Ventura, which will require uh, trenching between Ralphs and uh, that intersection. Uh, so um, uh, that's going to cause some uh, disruption to the Ventura traffic. Um, as Wesley said earlier, the council office agreed to check on the funding for the, this left turn signal from Hazel Team, and um, uh, had they have followed up on that uh, with the, and, and then on the DOT. Uh, engineering study as well. Thanks very much. Thank you. I'd like to have uh, Tamar and uh, John Deasy come on up. While they're uh, coming up to the front, uh, our August speaker, uh, when I was booking this, uh, the August speaker, my concern was how many people have ever heard of uh, probably the most powerful person in the city of Los Angeles that a lot of people never heard of? His name is Tim Lywecki. Do, do, do people know who he is? Yes. I have oh, sure sophisticated. I mean, for those who don't know who he is, he is president of AEG, which is the Ian Schutz company that owns the Staples Center, the Kings hockey team, one third of the Lakers, um, the Marriott Hotel downtown in the one with the Ritz Carlton, the Carson uh, Home Depot Center, the, the soccer team there, and wants to build an NFL football stadium in downtown LA. It's going to be a lot, and oh, by the way, they also want to bring an NFL team to play in that stadium. Um, a very important person in the city, and someone asked me, well, how the heck did you get him to speak? And I said, well, to be honest with you, his office called me. They wanted to come out and talk because you know they want to both tell you how great it's going to be and how it's not going to cost you a penny, which I think is great because it's going to give you the opportunity to make sure that what they say is going to happen will happen. So it'll be a very exciting uh, meeting, uh, and I think there's a lot happening at City Hall. I know there's a lot happening at City Hall between now and the August meeting concerning the stadium and tearing down a major part of the convention facility. That's all I guess. Okay, uh, tonight